Those are some of the headlines. This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman. In one of the most closely watched murder cases in years, a Florida jury has found George Zimmerman not guilty on charges of second-degree murder and manslaughter for fatally shooting unarmed black teenager Trayvon Martin. Zimmerman, a volunteer neighborhood watchman, shot Martin on the night of February 26, 2012, in a gated community in Sanford, Florida, as the teen walked back to his father's girlfriend's house after buying candy at a nearby store. A police report filed that night noted there was, quote, no indication Trayvon Martin was involved in any criminal activity at the time of the encounter. Zimmerman's trial took about six weeks. All six of the jurors who decided his face, fate were women. Five were white, one Latina. They deliberated for more than 16 hours before they returned to the courtroom. This was the scene as Judge Deborah Nelson received their verdict. Uh, members of the jury, have you reached a verdict? If you'll please fold the verdict form and hand it to Dep Deputy Jarvis. Okay, if you'll please publish the verdict. In the Circuit Court of the 18th Judicial Circuit in and for Seminole County, Florida, State of Florida versus George Zimmerman, verdict, we the jury find George Zimmerman not guilty. So say we all four person. Does either side want to pull the jury? We would, Your Honor. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, as, I mean ladies, I'm sorry, as your juror number is being called, please answer whether this is your verdict. Juror B-29, is this your verdict? Yes. Juror B-76, is this your verdict? Yes. Juror B-37, is this your verdict? Yes. Juror B-51, is this your verdict? Yes. Juror E-6, is this your verdict? Yes. Juror E-40, is this your verdict? Yes. Thank you. Ladies, I wish to thank you for your time and consideration of this case. We have recognized for hundreds of years that a jury's deliberations, discussions. Um, Mr. Zimmerman, you're, uh, I have signed the um, judgment that um, confirms the jury's verdict. Your bond will be released. Your GPS monitor will be cut off when you exit um, the courtroom over here. That was the scene in the courtroom when the verdict was read in George Zimmerman's murder trial Saturday night. Afterwards, Zimmerman hugged his family members. Trayvon Martin's parents were not present. Later on Twitter, his father, Tracy Martin, tweeted, Even though I'm broken-hearted, my faith is unshattered. I will always love my baby Trey. The teen's mother tweeted, Lord, during my darkest hour, I lean on you. You are all that I have. I will love you forever, Trayvon, in the name of Jesus. That was Sabrina Fulton's response. Civil rights groups are calling on the Justice Department to file civil rights charges against Zimmerman. A petition launched by the NAACP gathered more than 225,000 signatures in the first few hours after Zimmerman was acquitted, temporarily causing the group's website to crash. The Justice Department responded Sunday that it's continuing to evaluate evidence from an ongoing federal probe as well as evidence from the state trial, and that, quote, experienced federal prosecutors will determine whether the evidence reveals a prosecutable violation. President Obama also responded to the verdict on Sunday. He issued a statement that, quote, we are a nation of laws, and a jury has spoken. I now ask every American to respect the call for calm reflection from two parents who lost their young son. And as we do, we should ask ourselves if we're doing all we can to widen the circle of compassion and understanding in our own communities," he wrote. Meanwhile, former presidential adviser Van Jones tweeted an image of Dr. Martin Luther King wearing a hoodie, like the one worn by Trayvon Martin. Other responses were heard from the streets as protests were held across the country. In Los Angeles, protesters shut down the 10 freeway for 20 minutes. Here in New York, thousands gathered Sunday in Union Square, then marched for hours through Times Square and up into Harlem. These are some of their voices. America! We need to show America! Enough is enough! Enough is enough! Leave our youth alone! Leave
as, as a young black man, me walking the street, me walking the street, I could be seen as a criminal with a deadly weapon. Because as they said, the, the concrete was a weapon to this young man. The concrete was considered a deadly weapon to this young man. So it just, it harms me to feel like I, me walking the street is not, is not safe. I'm not safe walking the street anymore. difficult because he sees it and he's already had dreams about it and he's already had dreams about the man following Trayvon he's he woke up and told me mom I saw him following Trayvon so I mean he has nightmares already so that's just a part of what we have to go through every single day and I don't think this country realizes what we go through as a black people and how we feel every day and having our kids go out we don't know if they're gonna come home and it saddens me my heart is broken this is something that can happen to anyone's sons whether you're black whether you're Latino whether you're Asian anyone can be taken. It's about someone else saying that their lives mean more than yours. I had this feeling in my stomach, in my gut, and it felt like, I don't know, it felt like it was my son. I cried. My name is India, and I'm with my daughter Kennedy, and it's important because I'm trying to show my daughter what where we live, in the country we live in. I don't want her to think that all people are bad, but I have to let her know that there are some people out there who see black people, brown people, people who are different from them as less than they are, and it's not right. So I try to explain to her, this was like the perfect example. We watched the trial, we watched it every day. It was like homework. After camp, we sat down and we watched it, and each individual day, we talked about it, and I discussed it with her. And I'm here for Trayvon Martin, for all the young black men, and for everybody, for all of the people. It's not even just about being black, it's for everybody. We still today want justice. We still today want justice. And we will not be satisfied until justice is obtained. And we will not be satisfied if justice is obtained. Some of the voices from the streets of New York City Sunday, thanks to our new video fellows, Cassandra Lazare and Sharina Nodura, for producing that piece with Sam Alkoff. When we come back, we'll speak with the Reverend Jesse Jackson and Philip Agnew, executive director of Dream Defenders, a group of youth of color formed after Trayvon Martin was killed. Stay with us.